please do not freak out over the central nervous system, whereas it is without a doubt the most complex uh, system of the brain of the entire body. Histologically, it's really one of the easiest, as long as you don't have to try to figure out where all those little fibers are going. If you just look at it from a tissue point of view, it's a joy and it's easy. Well, you know, the classical three um, membranes covering the brain are the dura, the arachnoid, and the pia mater. We don't see a dura mater here because it's already been stripped back, but it's nothing more but dense fibrous connective tissue, which we don't see. This looser, that's very loose and very vascular connective tissue that dips into the clefts or uh, sulci of the brain is all uh, arachnoid matter, and that's the part that contains the big uh, blood vessels, of which this is probably a branch of one, and that, and that, and that. The pia mater might possibly be seen as just a couple of cells along here. All the rest of this is arachnoid, and so much for the meninges. Let's get an even to the um, more interesting things called uh, neurons and glial cells. There's uh, two kinds of cells and only two kinds of cells in the whole central nervous system, whether you're in any part of the brain or any part of the spinal cord. There's the big cells, which are called neurons, and there's the small cells, which are called glial cells. And glial cells are about 10 times as more common as neurons. Neurons, however, often look to be about 10 times uh, bigger. The parts of the brain in which neurons are abundant is called gray matter, and the parts of the brain in which neurons are basically absent is called white matter, and it's white because it's all myelinated cells, chiefly from a certain type of uh, glial cell. Let's look at some of the cells in the brain. The large cells which you see in this field, like here, and here, and here, and some of them may uh, look like their cytoplasmic processes are extending as either axons or dendrites, which you can't see in a routine stain. These are neural cells. These are neurons. And here's the area here where there's a lot of neurons. And I'm going to show you this on higher power now as well. Here's a neuron, 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 here's a neuron. And notice that these neurons are about 10 times bigger than all of these tiny cells, which are glial cells. Okay, there's a glial cell, there's a glial cell, there's a glial. And even though in this field it looks like they're about as common, in reality glial cells are about 10 times more common. Uh, neural cells have a nucleus, they have a body, and sometimes you could see extensions of cytoplasm from neurons to becoming uh, either large axons or dendrites. And uh, the difference, well, let's not talk about that yet. You can know this is a blood vessel. You know there's a lot of neurons here. You know most of these small cells are glial cells. And uh, let's go to now another area of the brain in which uh, there are practically no uh, neurons and practically all glial cells. See how all of these cells here look small? This may be a neuron up here and up here, and there may be a few in here as well, but all the cells here on the left are glial cells. There's five kinds of glial cells. The glial cells, which are chiefly in white matter and myelinate the substance of the brain, are called oligodendrocytes. They are small, round, and have a little clear zone around them. There's one, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. Most of these are probably oligodendrocytes because oligodendrocytes are the predominant glial cell of white matter. And as you know, there are very few, if uh, any, neurons in white matter. Now here we are in the area where there are some neurons, and you'll see uh, small cells like here and here and here and here and here and here. They may be some oligodendrocytes, but they're more likely to be astrocytes. Perhaps here and here I think would be good candidates for astrocytes because you could see a blood vessel here and you could see a neuron here. And the chief function of an astrocyte is to be a go-between 
between neurons and blood vessels. They are the blood-brain barrier. And so they may have a nucleus that looks a lot like an oligodendrocyte, but uh, in their location next to a blood vessel where there's neurons present, these small round nuclei, perhaps here, are much more likely to be astrocytes. Whereas when you see a cell like perhaps here, or certainly in the white matter here, which has a nice little halo around it, that's an oligodendrocyte. Okay, now the difficult cells, which are very small, and they may have, if you cut them a certain way, a very tiny looking nucleus, perhaps more cigar shaped. These are called microglia. And uh, they can be hired in routine stains to identify for sure. But whenever you see something that is extremely tiny and often looking extremely fusiform, if you happen to cut it along this long axis, like perhaps here or perhaps here, or maybe perhaps here, or here. These are microglia. This is the third type of glial cells found in all portion of the central nervous system and they function in being the uh, macrophage like cells of the central nervous system. The last two types of glial cells are not routinely seen in uh, the substance of the brain itself. They're seen in either lining the ventricle system which are the ependymal cells or they're seen in peripheral nerves which are the Schwann cells. And we've already seen gazillions of Schwann cells because every time you looked at a, a peripheral nerve and there was a, a, this wavy component and uh, you had a nucleus in there, that was the nucleus of a Schwann cell. The Schwann cells make myelin for the peripheral nervous system and these oligodendrocytes make myelin for the central nervous system. We are not going to be lucky enough to see the ependymal cells, but they are the only cells that line the ventricular system of the brain, and they are the only cells that look clearly like a simple columnar epithelium. Is there anything else we want to say about brain tissue in general? I don't think so, and I want to uh, impress upon you the fact that even though, like I said before, the central nervous system is clearly the most complex and uh, impossible to understand part of the body, in terms of histology, I really believe it's the easiest. And I don't think I want to say more about the central nervous system except uh, sayonara.